Hey Pride people, it is Mia B and today's video I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of being in the Marine Corps. I hope this helps some people that have, have been asking me questions in my DMs and on Snapchat. So let's get right into the video. Okay, I'm going to start off with the pros. Pro number one, you will have a steady paycheck. No matter what's going on, you will always get paid the 1st and the 15th. And then you always generally know what your check is going to be. Uh, once a year you get your allowance for like when you hit your one year mark and then if you get promoted it sometimes go up sometimes it stays the same so therefore like you pretty much know how you need to base your bills around how you need to base your lifestyle around you always get the exact same check on the first and 15th gift tape number two my next thing that is a pro is travel not all MOS is travel like that but I think if like you go to like IPAC or something like that, they don't necessarily travel as much, but you can still ask your chain of command if there are like any ops coming up or deployments or meals or anything coming up that you can volunteer to go on even if it's for six months and then you go back to your parent command. But travel is my number two favorite. I've been to Okinawa, Japan and Iwakuni, Japan. Both were beautiful. They're EDP. Most people don't call it a deployment, but I call it my deployment. So I feel like that's great. Number three is the GI Bill. You get 36 months of education free once you get out of the Marine Corps. And then if you stay in over a certain amount of years, whatever, you can pass those benefits on to one of your children. And then they can go to school for free, pretty much, and get the basic, um, basic house allowance. You, while you um, are getting the GI Bill, you also get a monthly check for you going to school depending on where you are and where your school is located so that's also good and it'll help you pay for books and also help you pay for bills while you're in school so if you want you can get a part-time job or depending on where you at you probably can just live off that once a month check number four thing that i have been finding very useful since i've been in is using tuition assistance and that's when you can go to courses and take classes online and in person while you're actually active duty in the military i say take advantage of this while you're in that way if you let's say if you want to go for like your master's degree or whatever when you get out you can use a gi bill to pay for your master's degree because you already have your associate's or bachelor's degree already paid for through tuition assistance with no money from you and i think it's like they pay like 250 of class you can take up to two classes at a time when using tuition assistance so I say it's a win-win. You get your education done while you're in, and then you can use the GI Bill when you get out. And either way, go, it doesn't come out of your pocket. Number five is housing allowance. If you are married or have dependents, you have housing allowance, and you get a certain amount of pay based off where you are. Like in California, I know when I was a Lance or whatever, you get paid like $2,400 to check, or whatever, and that's for you to pay for your bills and pay for your expenses for your family. Or whatever so that is a good thing and then if you stay on base you get free housing and when you still get your regular paycheck so that is basic housing allowance and it is very beneficial regardless of if you stay on or off base you get basic housing allowance but if you do stay on base your basic housing allowance is going to um your rent on, on base housing number six i would say stability pretty much everything flows the exact same way when you get to work, you know what you're doing, you know what you're not supposed to be doing, and you know what you should be doing. Um, you usually come to work at the exact same time. You get out roughly around the same time. And the people you work with are usually the same until it's time for them to go. So it's very, gives you a lot of stability or whatever. The same difference, like we find like a daycare or whatever if we have children. Find it in a good vicinity of base or you know, pretty much near base or wherever you stay out in town. So I feel like this very gives you a lot of stability. There's nothing that you should be too much worried about. So I feel like this is great for the mind and mentally. Number seven, you get to meet new people. Roughly, like people come and go. Like you probably meet somebody new every week. Like depending on like how people are checking into your unit and where you work at in your unit, you meet a lot of new people. And with that comes new networking. Everybody don't stay in the Marine Corps. And so 
But let me rephrase that. Everybody don't stay in the Marine Corps. So some of you, you get to meet all these people and then they go out and do different things in their life. One may become a lawyer, one may become an engineer, one may become a teacher. Those are different networking skills or people that you can network with once you get out or as you stay in, as you grow in life. You will always know that person when you're in the Marine Corps, you build long time friendships. So therefore you will always have somebody in some type of field. The Marine Corps has hundreds of thousands of people in it. Well, not really. But the Marine Corps is small. But the Marine Corps have a lot of people for you to meet. And once you get out, as long as you still have that bond, you will always have that connection. So with meeting new people comes networking skills and communications in and outside of the Marine Corps. Number eight, I feel like the Marine Corps gives you a head start in life. Say, for instance, if you are coming right out of high school or even if you're in college and you're coming from college, if you don't know what you want to do and you're not sure exactly what you want to do in life or where you're going in life, the Marine Corps or during the military period is a good head start to get you on with your life. Hopefully, by if you join straight out of high school, most likely if you only do four years, you'll get out roughly around 21, 22. So if you have, they give you enough time to figure out what you want to do in life, and to explore and figure out what your interests are in or something that you want to major in or what type of trade you want to go into. So once you get out, you are building yourself up for success, in my, in my opinion. Like, I personally wanted to do 20 years, but my body says no. So now I've been taking classes while I've been in as a head start for me when I get out. The experience, also this is another one, or like number nine on the list or whatever, it also is like building your experience. Everything you've done these four to five years in your first enlisted Marine Corps, that is experience. And then if you become an NCO, that is considered management if you were to apply for a job. You don't have to start from the bottom. You can start in the middle as management because you have been an NCO over two Marines. Or people in your shop, you have five people under you. You have 20 people under you. So it lets you know, it lets the company know that you are a good leader, you have some type of leadership ability, and you know how to handle a team. So that was pretty much like two in one. But you have free medical and dental for you and your family. It's not always the best, but at least you have it. And um, like sometimes you can get LASIK, you can get surgery if you need something, if your child is like special needs some resources you can have and get on base. Some of the other spouses may have a degree in this field. So you may not even have to go to the doctor. Your child can have at home therapy just from another wife. So that's also a good thing. Braces and whatever else you may need, medical and dental associated, but you get those when you are in the military. If you are single, you have the child hall, so you get three meals a day, not necessarily free or whatever is $369 that you don't get paid when you get your paycheck or whatever but if you like or maintenance and you miss some of your meals you will get comrades and those $369 will come to you that way you can bring your lunch to work or somebody you can send somebody to get you food because you can't get it because of the hours that you work so you are they also go with stability you will always have a meal you always have a roof over your head and you will always have a steady paycheck all you have to do is know how to deal with your money and you will be good on your part and then also specialized time to make sure you go get some meat because some people forget because work number 12 is you get paid leave and vacation i can go home right now and spend a whole month at home and i will still get my check on the first and 15th regardless of where i'm at and then if you're a single marine since you're on leave the money that comes out from the child that does not come out because obviously you're not on base to have those free meals so every time you go on leave you're a single marine you'll realize that your paycheck your next paycheck after leave is always a little bit higher and it's pretty much them giving you your money back because you want on base or in your barracks or whatever to go to the child those are all my pros for joining the Marine Corps or military. And then now let's get into the con. Number one con to me personally is stereotypes, regardless of race, gender, height, anything. It's stereotypes. Some people may look at you because you're a female, whatever stereotype they may have with female. Some people feel like females are badass. Some people feel like females shouldn't be in the military altogether. So there's always one of these two that are going to be negative. Look past those.
and hopefully they're not in your leadership or chain of command because if so they're trash also sun can be early early mornings depending on where you work like maintenance i know they have to get at work early motor t has to be at work or early armory supply stuff like that most of them have to be at work kind of early and depending on if they are married or not if they don't live on base they mean they have to get up even earlier for the commute to work and then getting on base and if you're on a base as big as camp Pendleton, it pretty much takes you 10 minutes or so from the gate just to get to where you work so yeah that can be a con number three is missing family and friends from back home can be a con but also can be a pro because most people are back home aren't doing anything with their lives or are getting into trouble which is why you join the military in the first place so but you do miss birthdays holidays and stuff like that so that can be a con. Also con, some leaders are trash, but I thank God that I have always had great leaders in my command and who will actually look out for the Marines or whatever. So that could be a con. Some commands are just trash and they just sweep stuff under the rug, but I'm glad none of mine have been. But that can be a huge con and make your entire Marine Corps experience horrible and down the drain which is why most people get out of the Marine Corps their first enlistment. But always remember, don't let one leader or one command or one unit like dictatorship your whole view of the Marine Corps or the military all together because not they're not all bad. So don't look at or perceive them all to be bad. Another thing that I hate is height and weight standards. I personally haven't had this problem, but I've seen how it has um, messed up some of my friends mentally when it comes to height and weight standards, especially after um, a female has given birth or whatever, and their body just don't snap back to what it used to be. So I feel like height and weight standards, to a sense, can be a con, especially if you were always on the heavier side in high school or college, and then you lose the weight and you go to boot camp and you get in shape or whatever. Then you join, you go to the schoolhouse, you're obviously getting pt or whatever, so you stay in the shape. Then you hit the fleet, and then now you're on your own, and then you stop working out, you get out of shape, you gain weight. Then it's even harder for you to get back into shape because you're trying to see where you want to fit it in your lifestyle. Where you want to go work out in the morning, work out during lunch, work out after work. Sometimes some people just don't see it, and then especially if you're married or you have kids or whatever, some people just don't know where to put it in. I'm not saying that is an excuse, but... Hideaway standards do kill a lot of people's, like, I don't know what's the word for it. Kills their self-esteem, the way they work, the way they see themselves in uniform. I'm not telling you to be trash, like, just be out of shape and fat. But I'm saying that don't let the Marine Corps hideaway standards determine your beauty or if you're a man or whatever you want to call yourself, you're masculine or whatever. So, yeah, that's that could be a con. Six is freedom. Once you sign those lines, you belong to the Marine Corps and the government. Some things you can do and some things you can't do. Just because your friends back home are doing it don't mean that you can do it. No, you cannot or you shouldn't be underage drinking. No, you do not need to do drugs. You know what you should or shouldn't do. It's in black and white in Marine Corps orders and MAR admins. So... When you do something that's messed up and you get in trouble for it, that's your fault. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying, some people just don't know things, not saying that everything's somebody's fault, but everything in the Marine Corps is pretty much in black and white. Yes, some people are manipulative and that sort of say, but what you can and can't do is pretty much in black and white. Where you can and can't go is in black and white. So some of your freedom is taken and then you also... If you just want to travel somewhere out of country or whatever, you need to go through a whole process in order to do so and make sure that country is safe for United States military and United States citizens. Citizens, yeah. Um, seven, if you are a female, be prepared for the bald spots, the hair thinning, and whatever else that come with pulling your hair back in a bun up every day. So my, <laughs> so my advice would be to once um you i think like most black people don't wash their hair every day but maybe other races do try to put oil on your hair before you put the gel on your hair oil or butter or some type of thing 
oat on your hair before you put gel on your hair because it'll act as like a coat between your hair and the gel so it won't break as bad when it's time for you to wash it and let down your buns and then also every time you part your hair versus if you do your hair every day you part your hair in a different part each day so versus middle left or right always part different on a different day and then also trying what is pretty much the same thing trying to do the same part over and over again try to switch it up if your hair is longer longer short enough to do two braids do two braids one week and then do a bun on this side this week well a part on this side just switch it up as much as you can that way you have less thinning try not to pull your bun too tight because you can do the ponytail kind of loose once you put your hair in the ponytail and then as you're twisting or doing your actual bun your hair gets tighter as you're twisting or perfecting your bun so try not to put the ponytail too tight the way you have less breakage and your edges aren't being pulled as tight for you to get the ball spots because now the ball spot that i had two years ago is come like right here now like when i pull it down so and ever since i've been doing what i just named with the butter and the oil um my ball spot has grew back and i haven't been getting as much breakage or shedding when i wash my hair and then nothing last thing last fun for the whole video or whatever sometimes you just gotta learn to be quiet me i've always been told that what's the word i'm not rowdy but i forgot the word but i've been told it ever since milps pretty much or whatever but i'm very outspoken uh, i'm one of those people that higher up or not well, no matter the rank, you're not going to talk to me any type of way. You're not going to talk down to me. You're going to talk to me with respect. Point made clear. If I messed up, okay, I understand. I'm not one of those people that just spells out. But you're going to talk to me the way you want me to talk to you. If you get routed with me, I'm going to get routed with you. I don't mind taking the consequences or whatever. But you're not my mother. You're not my father. So there's no way for that you should be talking to me any type of way. I don't mind taking consequences for it. I ain't saying that everybody should be rowdy or whatever, but as long as I get respect, you will get respect. Simple as that, but that can be a con for some people and it can be a pro for some people. But it also depends on your leadership and if somebody actually comes at you crazy like that and how you respond. Every every action does not deserve a reaction, and but how you react is up to you and just be ready to uh, whatever consequences if you do react in a bad way and that is that on that okay i forgot this this is another con in my opinion i drawn the marine corps thinking i could do 20 years just because i said i was under 20 years no boo -boo, that's not how it works how this works is and like pretty much like the year or fifth year before you're finna get out or whenever you're five or four years old you have to put in a re-enlistment package People that don't know you have to tell you yes or no that you can stay in the Marine Corps. So that's why I, another reason why I have to get out of the Marine Corps because it wasn't enough both spaces for me to stay in. So how that works is, oh, my bad. <laughs> how that works is each MOS has a certain a number of spaces that Marine that Marines have to fill. Like some of the people that are getting out and how many people, how many spaces they have left. For people to stay in and then you still have to think about people that are joining coming from boot camp to go into the same mos so if that mos is too filled or it's a fast filling mos like mine was i'm administration which is a fast filling mos it's very competitive to stay into you either have to let move and go to another job get out or go reserves in order to stay in the marine corps if you want to but I couldn't let it move because of my injuries, so therefore I have to get out. But that's it. That's all I want to say. That is my biggest con because I really want to stand, but now I can't. So now this is the end of the video. <laughs> and that's it for this video. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you have any more pros and cons that you may feel that I didn't name or you have any questions or anything, leave them down in the comment box below. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out, party people.